Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered, everyone, where I am sitting here with Derek Pierce, who thinks I'm a gremlin. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I said. And a troll. Don't forget a troll. Yes, I said a, a troll, troll and a gremlin. So for the for those of you who are actually Patreon members, not to endorse this for the thousandth time, but I'm going to, you would be able to watch the podcast before the podcast because we record this live and... Derek and I were having a little bit of banter before we actually went live, live on the podcast, and I was being my usual self-deprecating self, and he was trying to give me compliments, which I refused to accept, so. and so then he just gave up and was like, you know what, fine, you're a gremlin and a troll, are you happy now? Yeah, and she said, thank you, I am. Yes, but not really. <laughs> Please tell me I'm pretty. You are pretty. <laughs> you are pretty. <laughs> Thank you. And you're so handsome. Oh, you stop it some more, girl. Uh, I only matter from the waist down. Stop it. And you you do matter from the waist down. So very much so. So for those of you who don't know, Derek Pierce is an adult performer. You wouldn't recognize me with all these clothes on. I know, right? That's my mom's favorite line, actually. When she sees somebody, she's like, I don't recognize you with all your clothes on. Take them off. And Derek has actually worked with my mother. Yes. So, scarred me for life. I know. Is that why you own a gym now? I do. <laughs> like, what are you doing at 3 o'clock in the morning? I'm working out. Susan said, I don't be fat. Don't be fat. Don't be fat. <laughs> when did she... So did my mom... My mom didn't actually call you fat, did she? So here's how it used to go. And I know you weren't always privy to that part of the conversations because I kind of shot like maybe 60-ish percent for you and like 40-ish percent for her. Right. And so when I first got in the business... <clears throat> I know why she hired me. She hired me because I reminded her visually of another performer. Who? Mark Davis. Oh, of course. Because he was a big, bald, white guy. Yeah. Um, and she had had really good success you know, with him in the past. They had a great relationship, and he was a very good-looking guy, so on and so on and so on. And so when she started shooting me, you know, your mom is able to get away with certain <laughs> – uh, vernaculars. That, yeah, that's that for other sure. People can't. It's that British accent, man. She gets away it, with so yes. much shit. And people just go, "Oh, Suze, you're so crazy." But yeah. if somebody else said it, you'd be like, "You fucking bitch," <laughs> yeah, you know. So true. And so she'd be on top of a ladder and tell a girl to suck her gut in because it's not cute or yeah. something like that. And yeah. the girl would go, "Oh, I'm sorry, Suze." Like all of a sudden, it was yeah. her fault. Like yeah. right, the Suze didn't like the picture. Um, so. I don't know, about a year or so after, um, and we used to shoot at that studio right there on, with like Wilshire or whatever. Uh, yeah, on um, Santa, Monica Santa Monica and Wilshire, yeah. yeah. And, um, and so before she used to book me after a while, she started calling and she would talk to me and she would say, Derek, are you fat? And I was like, I, <laughs> I, no, I'm not, I don't. I don't think I'm fat. Okay, I just want to know because I don't want to shoot you if you're fat. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm fat. I mean, I'm pretty. No, shit, let me go look. <laughs> <laughs> don't get fat, Derek. Don't get fat. And you'd just be like, I'm not fat. So, shit, maybe I am fucking fat. I don't know. I could be fat. I didn't think I was. But now I could be fat by English standards. I have no idea. <laughs> and so after like a year of her doing that. She I, would just say that to you every single time? On the phone. Did you get fat? And why know what happened? Because Mark weight used to fluctuate yes, a it did. lot, it did. right? Depending yeah. on what type of type of year he was having. Right. I love Mark, so I would never yeah, yeah, drag yeah. him under the bus. But um, and so <laughs> in her mind, it was always like, I got to make sure this motherfucker's not a fat ass all of a sudden. So when he gets here, I'm not fighting his gut, you know. <laughs> And so that was the, always what I remembered Sue's for was that, like, you know, she'd be like, hi, Derek. Look, Sue's, I'm, I'm slim, not fat, not fat. <laughs> Good through the middle. <laughs> so that was her. And now you, and now you own a gym. All and you're there all Randall. the time because my mom gave you a complex. I do. I was always going to the gym. I've always been that guy. Yeah, you've always been like a buff dude. So what kind of gym do you run now? I own an indoor boot camp. Okay. Um, and it's based in Northridge. Mm -hmm. um, we run a really cool, high-intensity 30-minute program. Uh, we use a 200% mindset uh, concept, which is 30% workout, 70% nutrition, and 100% mindset. So mm -hmm. if you're missing one of those three things, then you're not going to be successful, and we help you get there. I totally have a problem with the food situation. Because so I work out – I know, because I work out a lot. Like yeah. I went to Orange Theory this morning – and when I work out, I'm actually kind of surprised by my endurance and mm -hmm. by my strength and all that. And like, and if you look at like my arms, they're pretty jacked and like my shoulders and stuff. stuff. So, but like my gut is like no bueno. And, you know, it's so funny because I'll sit there and be like, why am I fat while I'm like eating chocolate or like eating ice cream in the, in the bath? I mean, like the answer is obvious to me, but for some reason I, well, I we don't. we all do it. I, it's. 
it's a it's a habitual thing. We all do it. We make a little progress. Then we reward ourselves because yes. we made some progress. And then yeah. we wonder why we put the two pounds back on that we right. just got off. Yeah. It's a vicious circle. You have to stay dedicated. It doesn't get easier as you get older. It gets harder. It gets harder because my stomach used to always be super flat. But, you know, they say for women, especially you hold your weight in your midsection as you get older. And that's totally what's happening to me now. And yeah. it's making me insane. Men too. Yeah. Men too. Yeah. We do the same thing. that's true. And after 40, all bets are off. Oh, dude, I'm almost there. I'm um, going to be 40 in September. Well, welcome to the club in September because uh, I've been 40 for a while. Ugh. <laughs> I know, but men just get better as they get older. Well, I always said I'm a Sean Connery this shit, so. I love Sean Connery. That's why I'm a Sean Connery this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what, I mean, okay, so I tried, so I've kind of, I wouldn't say that I'm vegan, right? I would mm. say that I've switched to a more plant-based diet. Um, through, like, Monday through Friday, I actually have a meal delivery service uh, through Thistle where it's all vegan meals. Mm-hmm. And then um, I still eat eggs and I still eat fish. Okay. Um, I avoid dairy for 98% of the time. As you should. Though occasionally I've had, like over Thanksgiving and Christmas sure. I had it because I just didn't want to make life difficult for my parents. Right. I broke out like immediately afterwards. You can which, feel it, right? It's a trip, right? Oh my God. You get like the internal, um, yeah. um, um, not bloating, but the uh, inflammation. Yeah. And all, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know what should I do. <laughs> I would say the best thing that what I tell everybody is get on an app like um, MyFitnessPal or MyPlate and just start logging your food. Because then when you say, I don't know what I did, I ate right. And yeah, because th- that's the thing. I can't yeah. remember at the end of the day like what I ate. And I, I found that I do a lot of mindless eating. Mm-hmm. And I eat uh, like because I'm bored. Like I got to watch myself on a set. A lot of people do that. Yeah. And um, I've also discovered recently I'm pretty sure that I cannot eat hummus anymore. Why is that? Oh my god, dude, it bloats me so bad yeah. and like gas and there's nothing worse than like being trying to shoot, you know what I mean? And being in all these compromising positions with a heavy camera and trying to like hold your farts in or like farting the and then like hoping people like maybe think it's the model queefing or something like that. <laughs> it's fucking awful. Yeah, so well, no more hummus for me. Yeah. I, I would say you just log your food. Log your food. Because there's no lying in logging. You yeah. know what I mean? If 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 you log it and you're like, I don't know what happened. I had it happen with one of my members. She's she's on one of my challenges and she's like, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. And I, I, I eat really well. And I said, cool, let me see your, your food log. And more often than not, she was missing uh, one to two meals a day. And so I'm like, well, I go, let's fill in these spaces. But I can only tell her that because she logged her food. Right. So. Right. So you mean like she forgot to put in food that she had no, or she just didn't eating eat? She just, she was Mid- eating. Her, her problem is midday. Right. Okay. Midday, you're right in the middle of your whole swing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it gets away from you and yeah. you're like, I'm hungry. Oh, wait, I got to finish this report yeah. or whatever it is. And I, I find especially when I'm shooting on set, because we used to break for lunch. Like we used to stop. Now it's all walking lunch. Oh, yeah. We used to stop and like yeah. sit down together yeah. and like have a conversation and have like a family style lunch. And now like I eat on my feet. Like yeah, while because I'm. It's 100 to $200 an hour. Yeah, exactly. I it's know. so frustrating. That's what it's got to be. It's just another re- another thing that free porn has done to me. It's destroyed my diet. It's ruined I, my lunches. I don't know if I'd go that far. It ruined my lunches. <laughs> no more lunches. Speaking of free porn, yes. let's talk about a documentary that we were in that all I did was complain about that. Uh, yes, let's <laughs> talk about it. So Derek was in the scene with Jada Stevens um, in the Netflix documentary I was in, Hot Girls Wanted, turned on. And... Um, I say this all the time, but I'm so insanely impressed by how you guys carried off that scene that day. Because that was, that was I kid you not, that was probably some of the worst shooting conditions I have it ever worked under. Bad. Like pretty bad. ever. And definitely that year. That was the, and that was definitely the hardest scene of that whole movie. It was pretty bad. It was awful. You know, there's, there's a precursor to that story. Because you know, um, the producers had asked me about shooting an episode prior to that. Right. So there was a whole thing where they kind of sidestepped me all together. Right. And then when they got to set and they were like, oh, hi, Derek. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> this motherfucker's here. Yep. What are we going to do now? And I was like, hey, guys, what's up? Because I had told them that I was aware of their previous work. And mm-hmm. I said, listen, I said, I think you guys got a good product here. I think you guys are onto something if you do it right. And I said, but if I find out for whatever reason that you're trying to demean or drag anybody that I know that I'm cool with in this business through the mud, I said, I will fucking blackball you from this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, and if you don't think I can do it, 
try me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just, it's nothing personal. I said, I just won't have anybody talk shit about these people. Yeah. So for, for all of our indifferences and all of everybody's problems, like I'm fiercely protective over this business. Yeah. And at least on yours, uh, they certainly, well, it's you. They're not going to get away with anything. So, you know, when it was part of it, I was like, yeah, I'm cool with this. Like, yeah, I, I it was liked, all about you. Yeah, I liked my episode a lot. I thought it actually. was a really good episode. I thought so too. And it's funny because I know that, you know, a lot of people had problems with the other episodes. And it was interesting because when it, when the series came out, like the first couple of days, I got a lot of tweets from people saying like, thank you, Rashida, for finally portraying our industry in a positive light. And mm -hmm. this is a 180 from the last one. Right. And love the new Hot Girls Wanted, blah, blah, blah. And then like maybe about four or five days later, when people saw the other episodes, it was the like the tone completely bitch. changed. And I, I was know. like, well, at least my episode was good. And people asked me about it because they were like, you were in on that and you helped them. I said, listen, I said... Rashida and Holly had their stuff down. And I said, you can't fuck with Holly. Holly's just not going to take shit from anybody. And not that Rashida was trying to do anything. I think Rashida also, too, honestly, like, so she only directed my episode. She right. didn't direct any of the other episodes. Right. She, was, she was a producer, but um, she wasn't nearly as heavily involved. Like, my episode was kind of like her baby. Right. And also, too, what a lot of people don't realize is that Netflix had a lot of say Absolutely. in how the final episode came out. And there were things that were tweaked due to their input. Right. And it wasn't necessarily what the producers wanted, but the producers can't say anything. You can't buy the hand it feeds you. No. And and Netflix doesn't give a fucking shit no. what the adult industry has to say no. or what some cam girls are complaining about on Twitter. I mean, yeah. they're a massive company. So, like, the producers had to take a lot of heat of course for they things did. that weren't even necessarily specifically their fault. Right. But they just had to remain silent because... But I had the know, same conversation with Bryn when he was doing his, mm -hmm. um, the like, the whatever it was, the 10 greatest movies of all time, porn movies. Oh, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one with Paul, Paul Fishbein. Yeah. They did two of them. Yeah. And he was, and on the first one, he really kind of shit on me. And uh, and I was pissed off at him. Mm -hmm. and now, Bryn is like a mentor of mine in this business for a mm -hmm. long time, or Eli Cross. Um, mm -hmm. And when I hit him up, he was like, dude, he's, there's nothing I could do, man. He goes, I, I seriously, because I re edited like 15 times. Mm -hmm. That's not even a stretch. That's dead serious. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just telling you, man, I felt like you did me sideways. But yeah. okay. You know, but the, there's nothing you can do. It's, it's money and you push, yeah, you take it on the chin. Yeah, because the thing is, is that a documentary is <clears throat> is not always necessarily, you know, there's always an angle. Of course there you is. You know what I mean? And, and it's still for entertainment and they still need to sell it. So there still needs yeah. to be drama, you know? Like I think one people of the, want to look at us as, as the, it's, it's fucked up. Yeah. They want to justify what they already thought about the adult right. industry. Those are those people. There's a reason yes. why they're the underbelly. Yes. You know, and listen, that first one that Rashida did, it was a piece of shit. I told her that. You know. I, but it wasn't it wasn't untrue, but it was a very narrow view of the industry and it right. was shown in a way that made people think that the entire it was right. misleading. Well it was a pinpoint accurate depiction of those particular people in yes. that particular function. Yes. But that's like taking people who play triple A ball in freaking Wisconsin yeah. and saying they're the same as the major leagues in New York or LA. Right. It's not even close. Exactly. It's not even a remote depiction of what really happens. Yeah, that's actually know. a good analogy too, because the amateur porn industry in Florida is notorious for being shady yeah, I've and shot underhanded there. and you know I've as opposed so to like times. the mainstream porn industry out yeah, here in LA. We don't have time for people's bullshit here. Yeah. You know. You and know. also we're producing a different product. Well we are. But we're also close knit. Yes. And so everybody even if I don't shoot for somebody I know who they are. Yes. You know what I mean? When, when Greg Lansky is shooting all his black stuff obviously I'm not black. I've come to that revelation. Are you sure? Smart ass. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I know Greg. And Greg yeah. knows who I am because, you know, he's a hitter and, and I'm, I've been around for a long time. So we know each other. We kind of have a basic idea of what each other's about. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why we're so close-knit. So even though Greg and I might not see eye-to-eye -eye on a lot of things, I'll smash on anybody that tries to come at him sideways. It's not one of us. Like, I right. can talk shit to my brother, but you can't. Yeah, it's like a family dynamic. Right. right. Yeah, you know. absolutely. So don't, yeah, don't come at, that's my only thing is like, you know, at no point in time, even when I don't shoot anymore, I still won't ever demean this business. Yeah. It won't ever come, come from my lips that it was a mistake. This business is probably one of the hardest businesses because in mainstream, because now I, I go out on mainstream stuff all the time mm -hmm. too, in mainstream, I mean, it's kind of the same in the fact that you get to know people, casting agents, and then they see you multiple times and they begin to like you and then they'll eventually book you, you know, more mm -hmm. than people they don't know. Um, 
But in our business, it just doesn't stop there because mm-hmm. what we do is is so personal. Yes. And there's so much, you know, physical interaction mm-hmm. that we get relationships, even if they're casual, you know what I mean? And they're just, we're friends, you know. I'm really good friends with Callie Carter. Love Callie Carter. She's mm-hmm. one of my favorites to work with. I've never hit on her in my life. You yeah. know, I know her. I know her, her, you know, her personal situation and all that kind of stuff. And that's none of my business. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But that's that's the homie. Like, I got nothing but love for her. Yeah. Um, um, Miss White that just left right now, nothing but great things to say about her. You know, I've worked with her a bunch of times. So we all kind of know each other's parameters mm-hmm. and we stick by them because that's how cool we are with each other. Yeah. At least that's how it is for the guys. I know the girls are a little more catty. Yeah. You know, the guys are pretty straight up. Yeah. I think also too because you know we are a marginalized industry and we are like the black sheep of the yeah. entertainment industry yeah. that there's a certain kind of camaraderie around that you know and that we, we kind of bind together and it's almost, almost like us against them yeah, kind sh- of mentality. Strength and misery. <laughs> 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 it's just tough. It's When people turn you down in porn it's a little different <laughs> like in mainstream you never know what it is yeah i mean you know like i'm i'm never gonna be in a in a video series called monster cox at work it's just not ever gonna be me <laughs> that's that sucks or doesn't suck whatever it is you know right. what i mean but that's just the nature of the beast and i think that that porn at least from my point of view is inherently bigoted just because of how it's sold yes. it's not even done with malicious intent yes but when you go into the video store or you google online hot asians porn that's just what it is yeah you know and you you google bbc you know you're looking for big black cock like it's just that's just that's how we separate things and right so even though it's inherently bigoted it's, i don't think it's done with a malicious intent but can you imagine if that's how the rest of things were separated <laughs> like in mainstream yeah you know and but now you start to see it with um oh gosh what was it matt damon with the the, the movie he did i think it's called the, the wall the great wall Oh, God, yes, yes, yes. The people, about the Great Wall of China. Right. And they had this huge uproar about him being the, the lead. And I'm like, well, fuck yeah. He shouldn't have been there. I'm sorry. Yeah. But then the other side of it is they wouldn't have gotten people to pay money. Well, that's the thing, too, is that, you know, there's such a huge market in the movie industry overseas. So uh, China's like a massive one. And, and they had no problem with it for the most part. Well, yeah, because they wanted to bring in a big superstar to get more Chinese audiences to, to go. Right. And that's why a lot of times in the summer you see these big blockbusters that don't necessarily have a great script. Right. Um, and, you know, are kind of like to to our eyes, you know, in, in our language and in our culture, we're like, oh, God, that's terrible. But they'll do great overseas because it's the visual spectacle right. that, you know, these foreign audiences are after. They don't necessarily really understand yeah. the dialogue or understand the script or they don't care. Right. That's not what they're about. Um, and you'll notice, too, that a lot of times they're putting um, more like Chinese actors and actors of Asian descent in movies because it helps cater Right. to a Chinese audience, Japanese audience, whatever, which I think is yeah, great, honestly. I we need too. more ethnic diversity in our movies regardless right. um, of whatever it is. But it's it's interesting how it's kind of shifted. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is. So, I agree. Um, okay, so let's get back to talking about the oh, yeah. the amazing scene that we had. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, wait, wait how, how deep in this are we going to go? Are well, we going to talk super candid? Y- sure. Okay. I can always edit stuff out later. <laughs> I do. I've okay. done it. <laughs> okay. I mean, okay, so I just remember that we, okay, so after the, first of all, you were a great barbarian. You were really, really good. <laughs> you were, you were, the way, like, you, you spun that, like, uh, that axe around and everything, like, in, in your dialogue, you were fantastic. Um and it was it was a hard scene for Jada, I know, because that's like not her thing. That's and she even said she's like, I am like a gonzo, gonzo girl. She's yeah. like, this is not my thing. She is. And look, I mean, the dialogue was campy. I mean, of it course was, it was. It was like based on a Dungeons and Dragons idea, so yeah. it was very like medieval kind mm-hmm. of script. And it was it was kind of. I mean, I don't. I couldn't have pulled that shit off. I don't know how I pulled that shit off. <laughs> it was like, seriously, like no joke. It was uh, in the middle of summer. It was about 105 degrees yes. out in a ravine. And I was like, people With ask me. lots of dust de- and wood chips yes. and dust. And people had asked me, where are you guys shooting today? I stayed in Malibu. They're like, oh, it's going to be fucking great. And I said, yeah. yeah, me too. And then I got there and I'm like, 
this is a desert. This ain't Malibu right here. We're yeah, in the fucking Yeah, because the location ravine. is in that weird little place. It's right off of Malibu Canyon in the Santa Monica Mountains. Yeah. So it's in between Calabasas and Malibu. So it's actually a little bit cooler than the valley, but warmer than Malibu. It's like a an lot. in between. And it was so fucking hot that day. It, it was. was like and there was no wind. No, no wind. No. So it was static. Yeah. And then I remember asking Jada at the beginning. She had this full on chain mail oh. headdress on. Yeah. And I was like, girl, you going to be okay with that? And she goes, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. And I think it was like 15 pounds. Yeah. Like it was, I'm not kidding. It was like 15 because pounds. Because it had a big woolen cape attached to it. Which well, was that also was real chain mail you guys had. Yes, it was. And it kept burning her skin right, it when got she so would hot. stand in the sun. So we would have to move her into the shade or like lift yeah. the chain mail off of her skin. And they wanted to keep it on. So yes. she was overheating. She had to, <laughs> you guys had to keep the wardrobe on because all, otherwise it took you out of the whole cosplay element, right. which was the whole purpose of. The movie. Yeah. And then to top it off, we fucked on a rock. Yes, in the direct sun. Yeah, because just I remember I was trying to give you guys shade. And but like we the silky that we had just wasn't big enough. No. You know, it wasn't gonna cover all of it. And yeah. you were like, fuck it, we'll just do yeah, it. Yeah, he sun. doesn't bother me too much. Like yeah. I, I function okay in heat. I cold, I don't like my balls in my throat kind of thing. Yeah. It really yeah. sucks. But I felt I was just trying to keep Jada engaged long enough so we could get it done. Because yeah. Jada was like Fuck this. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Like, no, I, I'm dude, so done. I felt the same way, and I was just the fucking director. <laughs> I was just sitting in my chair, and I was, like, dying of heat, and yeah. I was like, this sucks. And then we had the Netflix people there, too. <laughs> yes. And they were like, you guys fucking shoot like this? And yes. I'm like, yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it was, oh, God, it was so brutal. And it then we had, um, we had that guy who was in the full knight's armor. Oh, after me. Yes. Okay. Didn't you do like a fight? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you yeah, killed him. Yeah, they were him. down the ravine. Yes, you yes. killed him before you That's encountered right. Jada. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was the worst. And then it was so funny because so Netflix was there, got what they had to get, and then they left before we finished. And after they left, we both Jada and I cried. We collapsed. <laughs> well, Jada tears. was done. Oh, yeah. Dude, I. And so was I. I know you were because Michelle was I like, was mad that day. <laughs> your production manager had her hands full for the rest of that day. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah, it, it was, was really rough. rough. But, I mean, you got you get, it for digital, wasn't it? Yeah, it was for digital playground. Yeah. Quest. But, you know, you got what you, you needed out of it. And-, and I got nominated for Best Director for it, which is hilarious to me because I was like, that was like my least favorite movie to shoot. <laughs> I know. It was one of those we got to get paid today kind it of was, It was really, it really good, tough. Though. It did look good. And, you know, it just kind of reminded me that sometimes mm-hmm. the movies that you – feel the most painful at the time or the most rewarding in the end because I've done some really cool titles over the years you yeah. know what I mean and and I've done so much uh comic book stuff and the cosplay stuff because I fit the the build of yeah. of their bad guys all the time yeah you know what I mean and those are the ones that are epic like I mean people care if I fuck Jada Stevens but they're like wait a minute you were Deadpool and yeah. I'm like, yeah. And they yeah. were like, oh, shut the fuck up. You were Bane? And I'm like, yeah. And they were like, you were this? Yeah, I was that too. So Jada's awesome. Uh-huh. But they're like, hold on. How did you pull off Pai Mei from fucking Kill Bill? Yeah. You know, an Asian guy. And yeah. I'm like, oh, here, there's a picture. And they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did that shit. Yeah. So I've gotten a lot of that. Those are the ones that people always remember are the cosplay ones. I think they're the yeah, most popular. Absolutely. I think because also, too, you're catering to an audience. Usually, guys, it's usually a male audience. Mm-hmm. It's usually the right age range. And, yeah. you know, they're also into sex. So when you combine their favorite comic book with sex, it's kind of like a win-win situation. I personally hate shooting that kind of stuff because I'm just not it's into hard. comics. Yeah. And it's a lot more work. And it's not like, it's kind of, it's not my thing. It's not like, you know, like Axel Braun, like shooting his, you know, um, yeah. big, like, com- like he loves that stuff. So I've for him, almost all of them. Yeah. So for him, I'm sure, I mean, I've, I've never met him, but I'm yeah. sure for him, it's very personal. It's very exciting because this is like his childhood dreams, like coming to fruition. <laughs> and so it's fun for him. But for me, I mean, they send me those like cosplay scripts and right. I'm like, I don't want to do this. Well, Axel carved out a nice niche for himself yeah. with those. Um, and, uh, you know, but now they've done away with the, the general parody mm-hmm. division, but they've redone it in another capacity, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that this year um, that the, the parody category does not exist in the award it's, show yeah, anymore. Yeah, I don't think it's parody in the same capacity. They have it somewhere else, but it's in a different label now. Yeah, because Quest also got nominated for Best 
I think action slash thriller, and I okay. think that's the new. I don't category. know what it is because there's also a comedy category, right? Because I got nominated for that too, but I can't remember if it was for Expos or Avian. I don't know. Hmm. I forgot. I got nominated for a bunch of awards this year, but I can't, that's cool. I can't remember which any of them are. I only remember a few. You know, yeah. I get nominated every year, but I'm like the Susan Lucci of porn. Like I never win. Yeah, same, same. I I, I, I fully, <clears throat> I fully do not expect to win. Like honestly, if I won like best director it's like best feature director yeah i would be shocked beyond belief because i feel like there's a lot of other directors in that category who deserve it way more than i do i mean that's not to say if i didn't get it i wouldn't like be like right but like i am not i'm not expecting it at all i think i finally got of my first full-on no maybe my fourth best actor um nomination Mm -hmm. and it was for uh an internet thing that we did for Pretty Dirty, mm-hmm. which, I mean, Brie Mills is destroying shit Oh, I there. heard about this. This is like a really fucked up scene. It's like, I, I okay, so describe to us what the scene is about. You because haven't when, seen it? No, I, I, don't th- I don't know if I can watch it. You, if disturbing. you just watch the trailer, you'll already be fucked in the head. Yeah, it's too disturbing for me. I don't think I can handle that. So we shot this, this thing, and... Uh, I play basically a twisted detective who uh, has sexual designs on his daughter, but knows that he can't do that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, I devise a way to kind of like circumvent the legalities of it, and I set her up to fuck somebody else, and I feed him what to say, and then about a third of the way in, I a uh, third of the way through it, I come in and then I fuck another girl while she's there getting fucked. It's it's really fucked up. Yeah, it actually was so fucked up that I called Craven, the director, mm-hmm. and I said, Craven, I don't think we can shoot this. Like, what are you? What I'm are you sure thinking? they researched it legally. And I'm sure they did well, their Craven full goes, due diligence. They did, and yeah. and Craven goes, well, we can. And I go, dude, this is pretty fucked up. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and he's like, I didn't fucking write it. Brie wrote it. <laughs> and and I was like, Brie Mills wrote this shit. And he goes, Yeah. And I go, Boy, Brie is a twisted fucking individual, <laughs> which she is, and she wears that crown happily. Yeah. And she's done an amazing job over there. In the short time, I mean, they're destroying it with this series. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so we shot it, and at one point in time, she wanted me. What really fucked up a lot of people was. Uh, uh, at one point in time, she wanted me like to kind of rehearse what I was going to say to my daughter on the phone to mm-hmm. get her to kind of come out. Mm-hmm. And she said, so I don't want you to say what you would say to her on the phone. I want you to say what you really would say to her. Like if, if, if you could say whatever you want, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? This is, I want you to rehearse that. And then when you get on the phone with her, it'll be like a total flip. Yeah. You know, and I said, okay. And she said, so I want you to do it while you're kind of like getting dressed. And I go, all right. So we started working on it. And I said, you know what, Brie? I said, like, how twisted do you want this? Like, how, on a scale of 1 to 10, she's like a 12. Oh, my God. I'm like, okay. So you want this, like, super over the top. You want it really fucking, like, I should go to jail kind of creepy. And she goes, <laughs> uh, absolutely. And I go, all right, cool. So I go, Craven, come with me. I go, listen, this is the shot. <clears throat> and so we're in the bathroom with the big, you know, bowl and, and the mirror and shit like that. And I'm shaving my head. And so I'm like just doing this, like, slow, uh, slow stroke shaving my head like this. And, and Craven's shooting into the mirror into me mm-hmm. and so I'm just saying I don't even know what I said like it's just re- re- twisted ridiculous shit oh mm-hmm. you know the way you smell with your virgin pussy and mm-hmm. your cute little pink you know baby doll dress and it was just but it was like with a really low tone and mm-hmm. you know I can smell the innocence on you and I can't I was fucked up and so I did this for like I don't know three three and a half minutes and right and so they're shooting it and Bree's at the end of the hallway like this and I look over and I'm like like that Bree and she goes that's gonna be the trailer so the whole trailer is just me in the mirror shaving my head. At one point in time, I licked the razor blade. Um, I don't know, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah. And uh, then at the very end, there's you hear like these footsteps and creaking, creaking boards. And then you hear her go like, Daddy, Daddy. Oh and like God. that's the end of But the trailer's two minutes of me shit talking into a mirror about what I would do to my daughter. So in essence, I'm going to hell. Um, <laughs> Quite one handedly, and that'll be that. But it was it was so good that actually got nominated. That's what got nominated. Yeah. So, but I think she has two other of her her movies 
nominated in the same category because yeah. the other guys got best direct best uh, acting noms for it too. Right. So uh, I mean, I hope that one wins only because it's so far off the beaten path, mm-hmm. and nobody has done that. Yeah. And I usually do their flagships for their new sites. Mm-hmm. So I did their first of of Pretty Dirty, uh, and then um, Pure Evil, whatever their other one was too. I did like their test ones for both of those. Right. You know, so she kind of brings me in, and I'm like, why do you always make me like the most sadistic motherfucker on the planet? It's because you're super fucked up pretty much or I look super <laughs> fucked up probably a combination of both you know yeah my, my morals are flexible to put it mildly I, flexible yeah yeah I, it's funny that you know I mean I don't people aren't usually talking about other scenes on set but I I can't remember where but I'd heard about that scene a couple of times and I was yeah. like yeah I had a few people go wow. like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I, they told me to do it. You and they didn't were like, write it. You're fucked up. And they're like, what did they write that down for you? And I'm like, no, I was just winging it. And they're like, yeah, you're the fucking problem. <laughs> I was like, look, man, it's just a roll. It's just a roll. The truth is I'm not even into like the super, super young girl thing. Yeah. I like grown ass like Kendra Lust and mm-hmm. Bridget B's and Olivia Austin's and and like those kind of girls. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Figures and tits and ass and... Not 19. Not that yeah. I'm not a 19 year old. Yeah. I'll beat cheeks on a 19 year old, no problem. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like a like a, a hundred pound girl is not really my idea of a of a good time. Right. I like a girl that can take a punch. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> kind of. So are you are you dating right now? Or are you single? I'm dating. You're dating? Mm-hmm. Several people? I'm dating. Dating. That's all I'm, you're gonna say I'm, about that. I'm out and about. Nobody in the industry? Um they're industry adjacent. Industry adjacent. Interesting. Yeah. You like okay. that term? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that is. Do you find it hard to date outside of the industry? I'll tell you what. Um, so I think that is in in the long run, it's easier to date outside the industry than in. Mm-hmm. Initially, I've dated inside the industry. Mm-hmm. When I met you, I was dating somebody in the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I noticed over time was when you date somebody in the industry, like and like if you're a performer and I'm a performer, mm-hmm. you're obviously fine with me fucking other girls mm-hmm. because. That's kind of how you met. That's me. how you met, and right. also too, I think porn performers understand that you can separate you sure. know, sex from intimacy. Sure, yeah. Um, but then what happens is, especially with the women, is you run into this other additional fold of of the feminine mindset when it comes to those things. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm dating Holly, and Holly says I'm cool with you with Bridget because I know she's cool, but I don't like Stephanie because she's a fucking cunt to me. So you're not going to work with Stephanie because she's a bitch, and I know that Tiffany fucks everybody off camera. So I don't want you working with her either. But Sarah's okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. you get this gray area of shit. Mm-hmm. You know, and guys do it too. It's not like it's just you know just yeah. females. Guys are a little less. Um, you know, but. If you're not in the industry and you're not on set every day, you don't know who the fuck Tiffany is versus Stephanie or Sarah. Yeah. So all you know is your man is fucking somebody else. Right. So it's very black and white. Like you know, you gotta be careful because you do my fuck other people. Oh no, he is. Like, yeah. I know that for a fact. Yeah. I don't know who they are. I don't particularly care who they are. I don't care if they're white, black, tall, short, skinny, fat. He's fucking other people, so either I'm good or I'm not. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. You know, so there's, like, this just defining line between the two. <clears throat> yeah, I never really thought about it that yeah. way. You know, I had one uh, male performer who, for a while, when he was uh, dating a certain girl who was also in the industry... Uh, she wouldn't let him shoot on my sets because she said that my sets were too intimate. I, but I get they, it. but he could work with uh, with any girls on other sets. Like I think what she meant is like some like Gonzo set, you know, where it's a lot of just like throat yeah, gagging. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, bit, yeah. You know what I mean? There's like a certain like roughness to it that she feels that there's no intimacy. But you know, the stuff that I shoot tends to be more romantic, and she yeah. didn't like the idea of her man being in a scene. That was like that. Love so it. like he could he could go fuck a girl if he was like gonna like beat on her and like right. be really kind demeanor of aggressive. Yeah, demeanor exactly. But if he was gonna go onto a set where he was gonna kind of like worship her and mm-hmm. and create this intimate scene, she didn't want him to do that. And I was like, that was such a strange thing for me. I mean, I can yeah, I get understand it. the reasoning, but I had never encountered that before. You know what I used to look forward to your sets for more than anything else? It was the build up. Because Mm. the stills would take – well, first off, you guys took such good care of us all the time. Um, So it wasn't like a super, super long day, but Mm -hmm. it was an intense day. Mm -hmm. And so we had all of these stills. You know what I mean? So we had a couple hours of stills. Yeah, because that that used to be our main focus. Right. 
was and, still. And so we had all of this kind of build up. Mm-hmm. And then when we got to the scene, it was like this release. Yeah. So it was like, okay, so now all this shit you guys have been standing still for, yeah. now you can just go ahead and do it. I just need 20 minutes of you guys having a good fucking time. Yeah. Don't particularly care about too much. You know, Onks will ask you guys to open up or whatever if he needs something in particular. But other than that, don't even trip. Like, yeah. just go until you're done kind of deal. And so it was this kind of, like, culmination. And it wasn't where it's a gonzo set where it's, like, you know, excessively overlit and mm-hmm. blown out. And there's 18 kinos bouncing off of everything. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And all that kind of stuff. And you always picked, like, by far the hottest girls. Yeah. Because of what you're shooting. Yeah. And the other ones were like, I just got to pump my product out, Mm -hmm. which, you know, everything has its place. But those days were like, those were dessert days, you know what I mean? Where you're like, it's going to be a little long, but it's totally going to be cool at the end of it. Yeah. I used to love those. Yeah. Well, and, you know, before we were just photographers who had to shoot video. Right. And that's literally what it was. It's like the photography was the main thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for my mom's website, stills were her strength. Right. Um, And we still sold to the magazines. Magazines still existed. Right. And then we just like kind of, the video was kind of almost like an extra little bonus thing. And now it's like completely shifted. Now it's all about the video. And the stills are like, hurry up and get them done. So just we for can advertising. Shoot the video. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's we, it's a weird transition that I've had to make. Um, and sometimes I still do feel like a photographer who just like shoots video. But I I've really been trying to focus more on the video and I've you know, as and also too as the technology has progressed and cameras have gotten better, it's become easier to shoot really great quality products. Right. And it's become more exciting for me. Um, I actually just recently started shooting on the Red Weapon, which is an hmm. 8K camera. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. And um, It's supposed to simulate like the Sony Red? It's, it's the Sony Red? N- yeah. <clears throat> no, it, the Red is its own company. Oh, I thought it was Sony. I thought Sony like parented them or something. I don't think so. Okay, anyway, they're, the they're, Red? They're, they're a standalone company. Okay. On their, and um, they started off with, you know, and the Red Weapon is like their highest end camera. and. I don't, okay. I don't own it. Right, right. <laughs> at all. It actually belongs to a, a guy who was a student at one of my workshops, and he just lets me borrow it because he's That's super cool. fucking cool. Like, yeah. And I, if you, if you're listening to this, I so appreciate you. Like, <laughs> and I only use it for special occasions. I don't use right. it for all my scenes right. because, like, it's right. just such. A, it's kind of a hassle. It's right. a monster to work with. You know, I run out of card in um, you know 12 minutes. And I'm shooting on like terabyte cards. I mean, it's just like insane right. amount of information. But it's such, I mean, the results are incredible. The dynamic range between like the shadows and the highlights is like out of this world. And I often have to do very little lighting and it can shoot in really, really low light. And it's just like, it's But there's a epic. difference. I've, all, out of all the photographers that I've known, so you, your mom, Ben, Ben is often is is another great photographer. You guys all know shit about lighting that regular good cinematographers just don't Mm -hmm. know. It's secondary to them, where it's primary for you guys. Yeah, you know. And so every one of the the still photographers that I have always thought were quality um, that transition into video, it's like it's almost like a regression for you guys. In some levels, like not the technology, but like you guys shoot faster Mm -hmm. um, and you light less. Mm-hmm. Because you know where to place people, mm-hmm. and you know where source. You know what I mean. So it's like yeah. you're like this is almost in some ways a little easier. That's what I mean by regression. You know that it's not as difficult as like lighting for for stills. Sometimes you have to be a lot more specific with stills <clears throat> lighting because the thing is is that you're capturing one specific right. image that is frozen in time. It is a standalone image, whereas a video is a succession of many, many, many different images. Right. So if there's a light back here that's kind of hitting a girl's face as she's turning, maybe in a slightly unflattering way. It doesn't really matter because she's only going to be in that position for a a split second. Then she's going to move. Whereas in stills, if you freeze that moment, it fucking looks like shit. Um, Also, too, stills you don't generally... Like with video, you shoot in horizontal format all the time. Which means that you have to place the backlights really far away from the subject. And so you actually almost can't be as precise. Um, Whereas with stills, it's mostly vertical format mm-hmm. and you can kind of move the backlights in a little bit closer and you can be more careful about where you place them. But um, Working for you guys made it better, easier for me to be a better performer. Okay. Be- well, because I have to open up a particular capacity. So yes. I, so I, I know the difference between a hair light and a backlight. Yes. And I, it's not like I chose to know that. I'm not a photographer. Yeah. I have no interest in knowing that outside of 
right. for to help me through a scene. Yeah. But I see, you know, shadows on people. I can see it when I'm doing dialogue, so I know. Yeah, you move. know, if you're blocking right. that person's shadow, if you're doing an over the shoulder or something like that's that. That's something that I was taught both by myself and by good photographers and good, you know, uh, camera guys yeah. too. Um, but that a lot of the newer generation of models don't learn. Yes. They don't. When you're like, you know, uh, you know, turn out because you're blocking your hair light. And they're like, I don't. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. But also, too, like a lot of people aren't using hair lights anymore, you know? No, but like sometimes they will highlight like yes. that. And they won't use the term hair light, but they're, you're blocking your face or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they don't know which way to position the girl, like to put her head that way or that way. Yeah. And it sounds stupid to most people, but it does make a difference. It does make a difference. Yeah. I, I think I'm fortunate because I really learned lighting in a studio environment yeah. where you could really see where every single light landed and you didn't have the luxury of working with ambient light. You know, a lot right. of, if you're like a lot of the, you know, the new trend in a lot of these videos is like really blown out white locations, white rooms, lots of ambient light, yeah, so which is like... You can't fuck it up. No, you can't fuck it <laughs> up. You literally cannot fuck that shit up. Right. And it looks beautiful and everything, but that is a very unspecific, easy way to light. I mean, try right. shooting... I mean, try shooting and lighting a moody scene, especially when you're moving from position to position. You know, as in stills, you're in one position, you can get that position, then you move to the next position, yeah. you can move the lights. In video, you can't really do that unless you want to cut every single fucking time you move. So it's 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 kind of a compromise. Yeah, it's I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah. So how did you get into the adult industry, by the way? How did this whole journey yeah. begin for you? The short version is I was dating a girl named Lexi Tyler. I like, remember her. Uh, so do I. Um, you yeah. know, I found old pictures. Um, I was going through my photo album, and I found old pictures of you and her at, your house? at my house yeah. when I had a party, and Luke Ford was there. I have those pictures. Oh, my God. I was like, it was like, I think Anki was there. Yeah. It was such a trip. Yeah. And like Justine Jolie was there. It was it was so weird. I was I like, know. oh my god, yeah. I have been in this industry a really long time. <laughs> I know. Um, so we got in together. She started doing girl girl at the time. I was still uh, uh, teaching. I was doing private private uh, training, and I was a martial arts instructor. Um, <clears throat> and then after about, well, we did our first show, and. When we went to the show, she was like, you know, I want a website. I want this, this, and that. So we made like little kind of like Zed cards for her because mm -hmm. she was actually modeling for uh, a photographer. And she had never done like nude modeling or anything. It was mm -hmm. just – she was a stripper mm -hmm. and she had just done like lingerie stuff. Mm -hmm. But at the show – I mean, she was a really attractive girl at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at the show, we went in not knowing anybody and left knowing a whole bunch of people, right. you know, because she's like, I want to get into this thing. And I'm a networker. That's just, I'm just social. It's just the way yeah. I am. She's not that. So right. I facilitated that. Um, after about a year, she was like, you need to learn how to shoot. You need to learn how to take pictures. You need to learn how to light. And I was like, well, where do is there a fucking class for Porn 101? No, of course not. <laughs> and she's like, well, you got to get somebody to hire you. And so the offers just kept being, are you talent? And I'm like, well, I'm talented, but no. Yeah. I'm the dude that jerks off to this shit. Uh, I am not talent. I don't know anything about that. You mm -hmm. know, I do these other things. And um, so I got offers after offers, and I went back to her, and her first reaction was, um, you're not fucking other girls for a living. Mm -hmm. I was like, don't shoot the messenger. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then finally it was like, well, how much money? Well, can you do it? And I was like, oh, fuck, you know, because I don't care who you are. Every dude is sat at home in the dark on their laptop and been like, I could totally do what they're doing. Their dick's not that big. And that's fine. I get those messages all the time. And that's All fine. the time. And my DM is filled with guys who want to be porn stars. Yeah, I get like, it. Just I, I get them too. And and listen, I tell guys all the time, like, your dick size is just a bit of the resume. There yeah. is a minimum height to ride this ride. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you're going to be at the show, man. Yeah. I go, this is such a small thing, you know, having to do with, with the business itself. You know, that just means you have a tool to mm -hmm. get the job done. It don't mean you can get the job done. Right. You know, so when she was like, well, can you do it? And I was like, fuck, I don't know. She said, okay, if you can get hired, you can try it. And so I lied my way onto my first set. Um, a guy named Alex Ladd, who I was friends with, hired me. Uh, he owned a company called DVSX, mm -hmm. him and his partner. And I had said to him in passing, like, hey, by the way, I'm totally shooting. I've shot for this person and that person and whatever. And he's like, oh, cool, I know them. So I'd be like, you know, texting them, like, if anybody asks, I've totally shot for you, okay? And so my first scene was with... Um, it will come to me. Um, 
Victoria something. I can't remember. Um, but it was for a movie called Goth Sent 4. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what I was doing. Not a fucking clue in the world. I think I drove there and into the driveway with a hard on. Like I was like so amped and ready to go. Yeah. Um, that I was so nervous at the same time. Of course. And I remember it was me and it was Guy Capo, who was the director, and then his uh, PA. And um, the girl, we were doing some stills, and the girl was like, oh, yeah, I don't have that much spit in my throat, and grabbed the lube and squirted it into her mouth. Fuck off. Yeah, like that. And I was like, I guess that's what they do, right? <laughs> I don't know. I've never been in this position before. And then, and then Guy looks back and was like, did she just squirt that? Vanessa Lane, that was her name. Okay. Um, did she just squirt the lube into her mouth? And she goes, it's water-based. And I was like... I guess whatever works for you, girl. Like, hey, knock yourself out. How did that work, by the way? It worked great. Oh, okay. She was like this cute, adorable little fucking gymnast girl. So she had like a rip body and mm -hmm. like crazy. Yeah, flexible. I remember her. Yeah, she was dope. I had like, I, you know, I, I wish I could lie and say, oh my god, it's the hardest thing I ever did. Nope, that was not the hardest thing. That scene was so awesome. <laughs> she was so hot and so like easygoing, and I had two people on set. But that was one of those gimmies, yeah. you know, where you just like get that hella softball and you get to knock it out the park. Yeah. Because then Guy went on a site called PornStarPerformance.com and was like, oh, I remember that yep. site. It's too bad we don't have anything like I that know, anymore. Right? We need like a Yelp. A reference. Yeah. A Yelp for like fucking, because yep. there's some performers out there Oof. who should just never work again. I agree. I agree. But like horrible experiences. Yep. So he put me on there, and then uh, another guy named Fernando hired me for a bunch of stuff, and then I got with LA Direct. Mm -hmm. um, so by the time I got to LA Direct, I was already working, and, and uh, Derek Hay already knew who I was, mm -hmm. and so it was an easy sign, and I had Lexi, and mm -hmm. so it was like you know very very easy transition, but. I was one of two bald guys in the business because mm -hmm. Mark Davis was the other one. Mm -hmm. And I was one of pr pretty much two guys that had legitimate tattoos because Barrett Blade was the other one that had, you know, bigger tattoos. Right. But I had more tattoos than, as far as I knew, than anybody else in the business because I had the big dragon on my side. Right. <clears throat> so Derek was like, well, not that many people are going to hire you because you fucking tattoos. And so we'll just be able to shoot you for this stuff, blah, blah, blah. That was 11 years ago. So I guess, here I, you are. I guess I've transcended some of those stereotypes, you know. And I was able to make a career out of it. But I always felt the irony was that every year I get nominated for acting stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've only been nominated for performer once. Only one time. And I'm like, so basically what the industry is telling me, like, your sex gang, not so much. But <laughs> you're a really good actor. <laughs> Boy, you can read the fuck out of a script. <laughs> yeah, dick game, got to work on that. But hey, listen, <laughs> acting... Kudos, brother. Kudos. Like, so when was your first scene where you kind of struggled then? Because you said oh that that gosh. first scene was like, so did you come out of that scene thinking like, I can totally do this. This is the easiest thing in the world. I don't know what everyone's talking no, about. No, 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 no. And then I did felt... you go into a scene and like you had a really hard time and you're like, oh shit, never mind. This is difficult. No, I didn't think it was easy. Okay. I felt like I had gotten given a softball. Okay, I so knew... You, you knew that you had been lucky. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I hope they're all like this. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Knowing full well that they will not be. No. Like yeah. I was 32 when I started, so it yeah. was like not. I knew better. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, I remember one of the first scenes I, sh I struggled in. They put me in a boy, 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 girl. Oh, man. And it wasn't so much. I wasn't. I'm just not that crazy about that many you know, around. guys' dicks yeah. around me. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm like, ah, don't touch me. Yeah. You know? Um, but it was more than that. It was, um, it was a guy named Brian. Um, who was one of the talent, mm -hmm. and he just smelled horrible. Oh, no. I mean, like, horrible. Like, I can't be in the same room in this dude horrible. And what made it worse was he was really nice. Uh, he was really, really nice. And so, I'm like, like, you're just a stinky bastard. <laughs> and so I got through the beginning, and we got ready to do the stills, and I pulled the director aside, and it was a gonzo thing. And uh, I said, look, man, I said, I, 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 seriously, his smell, his stench, I can't. I can't keep hard on with this motherfucker here. I go, can we please just shoot my stills at the end? And you can pop off whatever you need and just like have them back out for a second yeah. kind of deal. And he was like, yeah, 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 no problem. Um, that one. And I didn't have so much a hard time performing in the beginning. It was popping. It took mm. me a long time to pop shots. Yeah. Because it would just be this mental mind fuck. Yeah. And it, for me, it was not, I mean, I had bad days, believe me. There is no guy in this business that has not had a fail course, day. yeah. You know, um, but it, for me, it was probably take me in the beginning 20, 30 minutes to pop. 
You yeah. know what I mean? And you, I would just be there far and be huge as fuck because I'm like, and that, oh. And that would get, and it gets worse as time goes on because you sense the impatience of everybody else in the room yeah. and the girl. At first, the girl will start kind of talking dirty to you, tickling your balls, yeah. like trying to help you. And then about, you know, 15 minutes later, she's like, oh, fuck this shit. Yeah. She's on her phone. She's like, are you ready yet? Yeah. Just like, just, That's you exactly know what, what I mean? It yeah. And, it's, it's. And so what I did was, um, first thing is I told Derek, I said, don't put me in any more gangbangs. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do them. I mm-hmm. can't do boy, boy, girls or anything like that. I'm right. not ready. And he was like, well, Derek, he, he, your, your, your work will dry up. And I was like, then let that motherfucker dry up. Because yeah. if I get a bad reputation, they're yes. not going to say, well, it was in a group scene. Yeah, blah, you, blah. It, They'll just be like, just, he sucks. Yeah. That's it. So I was like, I'd There's rather. There's too much money at stake. Yeah. I'd rather take myself out those rotations yeah. and deal with the out, out, you know, the aftermath of it. Right. And so I did that. Um, and then I went to a hypnotherapist. What? I did. Really? I went to a hypnotherapist. And, and that worked? It did. It helped a lot. So really? that 30 minute time limit, now I'm, I'm popping on a bad day. It's like seven minutes. Usually I'm three to five minutes right in that window right there. Wait. Okay. 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 Yeah. I've never. Okay. I'm so interested by this. <laughs> so wait. How, okay. First tell off. Me, tell me how this happened. First off, having to tell a hypnotherapist, this I need to come faster. <laughs> that's a conversation unto itself, right? Did the hypnot- was the hypnotherapist like, wow, that's the first? She, she was. And, you know, but she took it really serious, which I appreciated because she wasn't like, this motherfucker, like, yeah. you know, pervert. Like, I mean, did you explain to her that this was your job? I did. Yeah. I, did. I so, told her. You know. and, and what happens to me on set, um, sometimes I'll fuck to pop, but for the most part, probably 70% I jerk to pop. And the reason is this, is because I know where you are with the camera. Mm-hmm. I know where the lights are. I don't know this girl. Mm-hmm. And so I start to geek out on, well, if I'm fucking the pop and then I move here and what if she spins the wrong way and she ends up with her back and Holly's here with the camera, but should be here. And then you just come in her hair. Or whatever it is, you know, and so I start getting all of these 10,000 other thoughts in my mm-hmm. head like, is it going to catch the stand? Is it, she going to move the wrong way? Is she going to throw her head back instead of forward? Are they going to be looking up her nose? Like I get all of these thoughts like running, screaming through my head to don't wow. fuck this up. Yeah. And so it just. There's, you only have one chance to get the pop shot. That's the problem. Right. Yeah. And so, um, <clears throat> so I always would be like, let me just jerk the pop. You can be right here. They'll do the quick cutaway and we'll be all right. Um, so when I went to the hypnotherapist, I just said, listen, I said, I don't know, really weird. And I said, but it's, I'm a adult performer and I need to come faster. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so we kind of talked about it for a few minutes. And what she really just helped me do is to just ch- to to channel the stuff that would be in my head that would help me get off and to calm my mind. Like mm-hmm. just to learn to relax and let go. You know what I mean? And I've had moments too where it didn't work and then I'll just stop for a few minutes and then I'll just wait and I'll relax. And then I'll be like, Okay. Yeah. And then I can jump in and then I'm usually done in a few minutes. Um, and, and it also makes it easier too that if I'm super comfortable with the girl, you know, and we're in a position that works, that there's not a, 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 a board or a nail or a spring in my knee yeah. or in my tailbone, yeah. then I can usually fuck the pop too. Right. So, but yeah, that's, so that's how I, I cured that. And I've told other people, man, like it helps. It does that's help. That's really interesting. Yeah. Have you found that that has crossed over and helped you like in other situations? Like has that helped you focus – your mind, I don't know, when you're... Well, I came from a fight background. Okay. So for those kind of high-stress situations, they don't really bother me. But mm. I also feel that I'm much more prepared in that arena, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, in a competition arena. Because you train for that for a long time. Yeah. Uh, now, you train, I guess you jerk off a lot too when you're yeah. a guy, but not under those that situation yeah. where there's a set of 15 people. Right. And it's the same thing too when I do condom scenes. Condom scenes fucking suck. Yeah. This is the worst thing in the world. Yeah. If if you spring it on me at the last second, oh, that might be a bad day. Yeah. I kind of need to know leading up. Right. You know what I mean? Like, hey, D, by the way, Saturday, that's going to be, you know, it's for Wicked or it's going to be condom, okay? And then you're like, okay, cool. It's not going to have sex for like 48 hours. I'll be fine. Now I'm good with it. And You know what I mean? Yeah. So you kind of talk yourself through it. Right. Yeah. Those were really hard in the beginning. But I'm not the only one because Wicked would always have to use the same guys because there's a small pool of guys that can shoot with condoms. Yeah. And also, too, they're very, they're mostly features. Mm-hmm. So they're very heavy dialogue driven. Yep. So they need guys who can... Who can act? So that's very important. Yeah, whose dick game is there, but the acting's hey. <laughs> well, I gotta say, I mean, after seeing you know you be able to perform with Jada in those really dire <laughs> circumstances for that Quest movie, I would say your dick game is pretty good. And uh, you've never, I don't remember ever having a problem with you on set. No, no. Normally, I'm good. I'm just saying, I've had 
my handful of bad days. Well, every guy's had their I, bad days. I always day. look at it like this. Like, the difference between the rookies and the veterans mm-hmm. is not so much performance. I mean, yes, that has something to do with it. The Manuels and the, the uh, stag, um, um, what's his name? The European dude. Why Nick Blue? In, no. The other European dude. What's a uh, evil angel? Why am I having a brain freeze? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Marcus so, Dupree? No, hell no. Um, not in a bad way. I don't mean it like yeah. that. I don't really know Marcus. That's not a, that's not a slight to Marcus. <laughs> I don't know Marcus. Um, uh, I was thinking like Nacho. And, okay. And, um, anyway. Oh, was, like Rocco Sofredi? Thank you, okay. Sofredi. So like those guys, I mean, Nacho, fuck everybody. Nacho's the best. Yeah. I, I don't care what anybody says. That's my personal opinion. Nacho Vidal is the best performer, hands down. You, you, nobody's on that dude's level. And mm-hmm. I don't think anybody's been on his level will be on his level for a long ass time. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I think he's so great. I just think he's really fucking good. Yeah. But anyway, um, the difference is that the rookies will keep giving you excuses. The mm-hmm. rookies will keep saying, no, I just, I just need like a minute. I just need a minute. Just give me like five minutes. I'm cool off. I'm be okay. It's too hot. It's too cold. I didn't eat. I ate too much. I drank last night. I didn't as, drink enough last night. As my favorite uh, term is Brad... Armstrong says, "Ah, oh, the excuse bus just rolled in." <laughs> yes, and I have I've, I've experienced that with Brad too. And and the veterans will pull you aside and say, "Listen, Holly, I can already tell you today's going to be a fucking struggle. Yeah. So if you want to replace me, now would be the time to do it. Yeah. And if you want to ride with me, I'm just letting you know it's going to take longer than usual. Right. And that that's a veteran. A veteran yes. does not fucking waste your time, and they get the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I Robbie D and I talked one time when he was shooting for digital, and um. I don't remember the guy who was in question, but R- Robbie didn't like him. Mm-hmm. And Robbie was like, this guy's fucking not very good. He's mediocre, blah, blah, blah. And we had uh, Marco Banderas, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Porn life. I am Marco. <laughs> $30,000 <000 smile. laughs> Um But so Robbie had been waiting for this kid to fail. Mm-hmm. And Robbie didn't want to hire him. The company made him hire him, whatever. And, I've, been in that, I've been in that situation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yes, very much so. Mm-hmm. And um, so Robbie had, Marco had just shot a scene. And he told Marco, I want you to hang out because you might do the next scene. Are you cool with that? And Marco was like, yes. I am okay, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so when Robbie saw things going sideways, he pulled Marco aside and he said, here's what you're going to do. He said, I'm going to dismiss this guy in about three minutes. And when I do, before his fucking pants are on, I want you fucking that girl. Wow. So whatever that has to be, that's how I want it to be. Yeah. Right? It just to, I mean, he was really trying to shame the shit out the dude because he didn't yeah. want to, he didn't want to have to shoot him in the first place. Right. You know what I mean? And sure as shit, fucking Marco was, was balls deep in that broad, oh and the dude's like God. putting his pants on. I had that happen for me with Hustler where oh. there's been, there was one dude that I replaced like on the fly when I had shot a scene and then this shit went sideways and I didn't know who he was and so I was like, you know, ah, who fucked this one up? You know, and I'm walking, and I didn't know the guy was still there. Yeah. I don't really care, yeah. but I didn't know. Well, he was waiting for fucking Uber and oh. he literally was like, like this is everybody else and he was over here by himself like huddled in the corner, right? Oh. Like, it's rocking back. <laughs> like, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. You can never live it down. The only thing you can do when you fail a scene that bad is leave. I don't yes. care if you have to fucking walk home. Yeah. Do not stay on set. No. We are talking about you. Yes. We are absolutely talking <laughs> shit about you. If you're new, you are on our lips right now. Uh, oh. If you're a veteran, then we already gave you a pass because you weren't a dick about it. Yeah. But I've seen rookies be like, you know, they, they'll blame the girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not the job, bro. No. If she sucks your dick off cameras because she wants to, because she wants to go home or she feels for you or whatever her deal is, that's not her job. Yeah. Her job is to take the dick. Yeah. On camera. Yeah. You got to bring the hardware, you know? <laughs> so if you're not up to par, man, take the shot to the dome. Don't blame the girl. Yeah. You know, I've seen it. It's, uh, oh man, it's brutal. So when I had my um, adult film school show for Playboy TV, yeah. the whole premise was amateur film couples. Ooh. Oh, dude, it Whoa. was the worst. So it was always, you know, the couples had to have never had sex on camera before. Right. And they were actually like a real couple, right? right. So they were always, already like kind of familiar with each other, which can kind of be a boner killer. Like Sometimes. a guy might be more excited to come to set to have sex with a girl that he's never had sex with before, yep. as opposed to the wife he's been married to for 13 years yep. and has three yep. kids with, right? I agree. So now, not only the first season at least, not only uh, is, you know, I'm dealing with all new talents, right? The girls and the guys. So that that alone is going to make the whole thing just a fucking nightmare. Yeah. 
But the productions were really big, and they had a lot of people on set. So because what was your it's not rate? only me. Oh, dude, it was like 80%. eighty. Oh, it, How did 80, I, I know it. I know it. It was so bad because yeah. it's not only me filming it. Right. It's also the crew filming me filming it. Right. And because it was Playboy TV, there was like P. I mean, there was like thirty people on set. Yeah. You know, and um, so so all of that. All of that. Now, because we were shooting in L.A. and the condom law and Playboy <sighs> plays by the rules and pulls oh, permits. You had to fuck your wife we, with a condom? Yep. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. So, again, we've got a amateur couple who's never had sex on camera before. Mm-hmm. And the guy's been married to his wife for 13 years, has three kids with her. They haven't used condoms together in 13 years. And now, all of a sudden, they've got to use condoms on camera for the first time in front of a huge crew under enormous amount of pressure. Yep. And with no experience, and it was a fucking yeah, nightmare. Nightmare. I Absolutely. mean, I can't tell you how many times that I would have to clear the room of everybody because the guy was struggling, couldn't yeah. do it. And be like, okay, everybody get out, right? So everybody would get out. But I somebody had to be nearby to know when they were ready. So I would have to step <laughs> just outside the room, like on the other side of the doorway, and just listen to the... <laughs> the I like time. how we all have our jerk off sounds. Yeah, I, you know, and then the girl like kind of mumbling to the guy, and then like maybe like the sound of her trying to suck his dick, and then like the sound of disappointment when he couldn't get, and me just sitting there and just waiting for them <laughs> to say, "Okay, we're ready," and then me going, "Everyone get on set," and then trying to get everyone on set, for and the then their cameras rolling. Get. I mean, we don't even slate right? right because like we don't want to give this guy a second Got to tail, lose this everything. fucking hard on yep. and then by the time we're up and running he's lost Shh, it again gone everyone's got to leave set again i've got to go to the outside of the door and listen again for oh, the whole dude. thing oh yeah it was awful and every guy would come to set with like the cockiest attitude at the beginning like yeah dude i'm gonna kill this like you know oh totally i have we have sex in front of people other people all the time we go to sex parties like this it's is gonna be easy thing. like i have a big dick and i'm just like all right dude you have the, no it's so different when you're on set and it's like when you're like out at a sex party and you're drinking and you're surrounded by all your friends and there's and you're you know what I mean that's one thing it's a vibe but exactly but when you're on set everybody else is dressed yeah nobody else is having sex and, and you nobody know nobody gives a shit yeah I want to go home. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you know what honestly I think got people more than anything was the silence. Yeah, it's awkward as fuck. Yes, fun. because I you, like the silence. Because though. you can't play music, you right. know, you can't set the mood or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's just like a guy, and the, and you've got a boom hanging over your head with the sound guy like sweating, like you know, a few feet from you. It's oh, dude, it was awful. I I always laugh at the guys that say they have a big dick because first off, you ain't seen big dicks till you've been in porn. Yeah. And that goes for guy or girl. And sometimes if the guy's dick is too big, it's actually it's not a good thing because the, he can't get all the way hard right. because of the blood flow. And actually, he, the scene yeah. is not as strong because he he gets he gets a little I, floppy. Yeah, I had my first big dick experience with Chris <laughs> Charming. Do you remember Chris Charming? Yes, he was a German guy. He swear to God, he had like a club foot. Yeah, I don't think I ever shot him, but the name. I yeah, he we wouldn't have been on your radar. <laughs> not not that visual right um but um i was shooting for johnny darko and it was for cytheria and it oh, was man, it was a girl. boy boy girl which i was not already fond of and uh-huh. it was with veronica jet i think okay so it was like a dp mm-hmm. now chris charming is like 160 pounds soaking wet mm-hmm. i'm 220 pounds mm-hmm. and so we get there and he's this german guy and he's like yeah i know why they hired me because i have a huge cock and <laughs> <laughs> We're like in the kitchen and he said that shit to me and I was like, mm, they hire me because I'm cute. Like I don't what do you what do you say to that, right? Yeah, There's yeah. no touche. Yeah. And um so and then I was new. I was still a couple months old. And and you start thinking in your head, like, right, like how big could it really be, right? Like it's, it's not that fucking big. I mean, big is relative to the person and right. you're making all this shit. And right. so then we're we're going to get changed. This is like straight up gonzo. So it's mm-hmm. like just be butt naked and get in there. And so you can't help but do the the awkward, you know, uh, uh, Look over. Pu- public lavatory stare, like, oh shit, right? And so I go, ah, it's not that big. And and he turned back around. And I was like, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm like, that fucking thing is huge. And he's a little dude. And I was like, oh my god, D D, you can handle this shit. It's fucking <laughs> like I have to take the dick, right? Like it's me that has to take the dick. But it's just I'm next to it, you right. know. So I'm like, hold on, guys. And the difference in body size. Yes, everything is working against me. Yeah. And so I take a break. I go to the bathroom. And I'm literally like in the mirror, like, come on, man. 
We can do this. It's fine. It's totally, it's, we got this. No fucking problem. <laughs> It's okay, man. Just breathe, right? Like, once again, like, I don't have anything to do with his dick other than it's next to me. Yeah. But it's a guy thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so we get back in there, and I look over at her and him, and I go, let me guess. I'm doing all the anal today, huh? <laughs> and so I'm like, I have to hold her up in, like, DP, like, reverse cowgirl standing yeah. where he gets to fuck her, and I yeah. have to hold the bitch. Like, yeah. It's just, it's, it's horrific. Every dude wants a 12 inch dick it's not that we want to give you women 12 inches we just want to see the other four inches hang out and know it's there yeah it's the same reason why we have cars with 800 horsepower Mm -hmm. it's the same fucking thought process same reason that people drive hummers nobody's gonna need a hummer it's stoplight to stoplight yeah we just want to have 800 horsepower from stoplight to stoplight so if a girl says something stupid like give me more i can hurt her throat yeah (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's a total ego thing. Has nothing to do with anything right. else. Because I've seen big dick dudes fall flat on their face, and and I've heard the complaints from girls. Mm-hmm. No girls ever are gonna complain about me in that regard. <laughs> I'm good with what I got. Like yeah. I'm cool. I've made a career out of it, and and I'm cool with it. But yeah, the first time you any dude in this business says I have a big dick. You, even the guys who have big dicks kind of like low key shut up, unless like yeah. you're Mandingo and then somebody's yeah. on your level. They're probably not bigger than Mandingo, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like there's always somebody better of sorts. You know what I mean? So you have to be real careful with that level of cockiness. And yeah. when I got to be a veteran, there were very few new guys that I was friendly with mm-hmm. because I was like, fuck them. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't pay the same dues that I had to pay. Mm -hmm. They weren't fucking at a pool in January at 2 o'clock in the morning with a fire pit on your ass and having to bang on the first two steps in the pool. Yeah. You know, stupid shit like that. Yeah. And I used to shoot these crazy features that were like 18-hour days. Yeah. You know, they didn't have to do any of that. And then you have sex at the end of the day after you've done like 15 hours of dialogue and you're fucking exhausted. Yeah. And it's like, okay, now get your dick hard and fuck her for 40 minutes and and then softcore and yeah. Yeah, I used to shoot for uh Nick Steele, Nicholas mm-hmm. Steele and the Pinkowski. And his I used to shoot like three or four features a month for him. And they were a normal day was sixteen hours. And I would and it would be two days. So they'd be like a Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it was. And I would do two scenes in one day, usually. So I'd do one in the morning and one at night. Mm-hmm. And then the next day would mostly be dialogue. Occasionally I'd get a third scene out of that. Mm-hmm. But so you'd come in and you'd fuck at 10, 11, whatever, as soon as the girl was out of makeup. Then you'd shoot dialogue for most day. Then you'd have like a three-hour break, four-hour break. And then you'd shoot your second scene. Then you'd shoot your dialogue out. Or you'd shoot your dialogue and then the sex scene. But it'd be like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, there were times... So many times it was like 4.30 in the morning. You can't even keep your eyes open and you literally are fucking. There was one time I was working. I can't remember who it was. And we, it was like 4 o'clock in the morning. We were in a warehouse on an ottoman, like a circle white ottoman. And we finally got through the whole scene. And they're setting up the FIP, the fake internal pop. And they're like, FIP. And I'm just like kind of like falling asleep. And they're like, FIP. And they're starting to scream at me, fucking FIP. And I was like, what? And they're like, <laughs> Fucking fake cum, you asshole. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, sorry, because you just, it's just such a long day. Yeah. So I haven't had to do those. Well, no, we did one for Naked, the movie we shot for Kay Brandt. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was tough. If I didn't have Brittany Amber as my female Brittany talent. Brittany Amber's amazing. She was so, like, I got the first half of the scene done and she fucked me for the second half of the scene. Yeah. And I told her afterwards, I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Like, I owed her for finishing that scene because I was not prepared to do it on my own. We were outside. We were covered in fucking dry yogurt and coffee grounds to simulate mud. And it was overcast and it was drizzling and it was close to nighttime. So we were fighting light and Uh, we were were naked. Like it was naked. Fucking, you know, that was the theme. And so we were naked all day. You know, oh. so out in the wilderness. Yeah. It was just, yeah. So every once in a while when I do one of those really, really tough scenes, like the one we did for you, that mm-hmm. was definitely one of the toughest scenes. Those are the days when I go like, all right, I still got it. I yeah. can still do this shit. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I would not, I would definitely not hire a rookie for a scene like that. No. And we would have never finished it. No, it, 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 those are the rough days. But those are the ones that you always remember, you know. Oh, I'll never forget that day, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I, I do like that element of it. I... Even when I retire, like even when I stop, like I mean, I'm gonna bounce soon. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna stick around for too much longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not that I don't love the business. I just I've seen a changing of the guard. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's the Xanders, who's certainly not new. He's mm-hmm. made his own way. Um, it's the Xanders. It's the small hands. It's those kind of 
like my body type is not really relevant anymore for mm. whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So I've seen because 10 years ago when I came in, 11 years ago, that's what was you know, starting to pick up me, Johnny Sins, Johnny Castle, mm -hmm. those kind of like Charles Dara, those kind of fit guys, you know, mm -hmm. and now it seems that, that the, uh, what would they be classified? I mean, like they're both like rock guys, right? But they're kind of like a little bit hipster-ish, a little bit, mm -hmm. something like that. Just more slender and yeah. that kind of thing. Okay. So I've seen to, there to be a difference, at least for me, for the top guys. Right. So to me, that means it's time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope you stick around for a little while longer. I'm gonna still stay fucking a little bit. You yeah, know? there's we gotta shoot again, or I don't put you on a rock in the middle of the fucking 105 <laughs> you, degree heat. You, you give me a softball. With the dust and yeah, I'll give you a softball. I owe you a softball. You you know if you ever have a cameraman and you need like a different cameraman, please hire Mike Quasar. Oh, I love him. How awesome is he? He's the best. He's the best. We actually worked together for the first time uh, for Joanna Angel a couple right. of weeks ago, and he's um, the best. Yeah, we had, like, so much fun. I he, was just doing the pictures. He makes the day. Like, he, he doesn't call me by my name. He calls me douche. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys have this whole, like, back and forth thing where you make fun of each other oh, on we social hate media. E we hate each other yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. So I'll hack his, his Instagram or his uh, Twitter. Yeah. And when he leaves his computer open, uh -huh. I'll go on there and I'll just start posting shit. Hey, I'm shooting uh, all guy male jerk off videos. <laughs> Send me DMs. I'm looking for new fresh talent. Send me dick pics. <laughs> right. You know, all of this kind of shit. Um, and and I, I love the guy. I yeah. so love the guy. But on set, I've had girls ask me, do you guys really not like each other? And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Fuck that Canadian. And he's like, I fucking hate him. So they'll even put on the call sheet. It'll be like, Holly Randall, douche. <laughs> Holly Randall's wardrobe, elegant wear, casual clothes, <laughs> douche, don't wear douche gear. <laughs> like that's, that's how they treat me. Which is ironic because I think it's so funny. Yeah. And that's been our relationship. And every time he sees me, he's like, why the fuck do we still hire you? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. And he's like, I'm never hiring you again. And then I'm like, I'll see you in a few days, man. He's like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> that's our dynamic. I love him. But he really, he's an underrated shooter. Yeah. Like, he's actually really, really good. I was really impressed with the amount of equipment that he showed up with to Joanna's shoot. He actually introduced me to some new lights that I, um, I'm going to buy because they're like small and very yeah. powerful and compact. Yeah. And he had like a ton of shit. I mean, more shit than I have. And I was like... You're supposed to be just like a gonzo director, you know, and I'm like doing these big features and you have like more stuff than I do. I was like really impressed. He secretly really does give a shit. Yeah, he does. And that's, no, he does. that's his biggest downfall because he's always <laughs> he like, cares I, too much. I fucking hate this stupid shit. I hate shooting this shit. But I'm like, dude, you really do care. Yeah. You really do. He's, well, that's he, why he keeps getting hired. And that's why he can go on Twitter and say whatever the fuck he wants about anything. And, yeah. And people will still hire him because he does a good job. He, he's my favorite. He, he gets away with so much. Yeah. You know, and I, but I see him, we're like, you know, casually dating because I see him so often. Yeah. You know, I, I love that guy. He's, he's one of the best for yeah. sure. He's, yeah. He's fantastic. All right. Well, on that note, um, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having it me. It was so good to see you. I it, know. Where can uh, people find you on social media once you decide to make your Instagram <laughs> when, not private again? When I lift the ban? Yes, when you lift the ban. I, I don't know. I'll probably lift it soon. Um, you guys can find me on uh was it? It's at Derek Pierce, and then on Twitter, it's at the D Pierce, uh, and then you can find me on Facebook at uh, the Real Derek Pierce, where you can also purchase my uh, books. I have a volumes of books called uh, the uh, Bad Boys Guide to Being a Good Man. Nice. Yeah. So I, I'd be learned good. I could write some shit. <laughs> you just try to pretend to be dumb so that you won't intimidate other people. Don't fuck with my street cred. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Derek. My pleasure. And thank you guys for listening. You can find you can follow. Take time. Sorry, I can't. Where can uh, we find you, Holly? I can't. Where, you can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and Twitter. I also have a Snapchat at Holly Randall seventy eight, and I have a website hollyrandall.com. And as always, if you want to support my podcast and watch these interviews live, you can. Join my Patreon at patreon.com slash hollyrandallmfilter.